Was? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to the Sony booth at NAB 2018, where we're giving presentations here at the small stage near the professional camcorder section of our booth. Our next presentation, once again, Doug Jensen, this time with the introduction of new palm camcorders with our fast hybrid autofocus system. You definitely want to check this out. And here's Doug. <laughs> Yes, you're about to see a cameraman eat crow, because I said I would never use autofocus ever, and now I've had to walk back on all of that, because now autofocus has reached the point where I would use autofocus. Um, in fact, um, I would say that uh, autofocus can outperform my, any of you out there, I guarantee you the autofocus on the new cameras can outperform you on action, sports, wildlife, that sort of thing. I'm gonna show you some video that I shot. Um, First of all, um, my name is Doug Jensen. I don't work for Sony. I've come and worked in their booth for the last 10 years or so. I have a production company in Rhode Island, so uh, and I produce independent training videos and write books on Sony camcorders, so I know them fairly inside out. It takes me weeks to do one of my books or videos, so I really get a chance to get inside the cameras and check all the systems, test them out, find out what works well, what doesn't work well, what, what settings to use, what settings to recommend. Hopefully, for people who uh, buy my books or watch my videos. I'm doing a lot of the legwork so you don't have to. So uh, when Sony said in, in the past on the camcorder videos, a lot of the cameras have autofocus. I've always tested it. No good. Out the door. You got to use manual focus on this if you want to be a professional. Uh, but I can no longer say that now with the new camcorders that have uh, fast hybrid autofocus. A little bit of a mouthful, but that's what Sony calls it. Fast hybrid autofocus. Which cameras have that? Let me roll ahead here, and I'll show you which cameras currently have that. I think you'll see it on more cameras in the future. So I'll come up, and there we go. The Z90, the NX80, and the AX70, which are all different variations of basically this camera here. Little teeny small camera, does 4K, Beautiful picture quality for a small little camera like that. And all four of those, all three of those cameras are basically different variations of this. So let me pause this a second. A little awkward here. I don't have slide, I couldn't do slides and video, so I decided to kind of mix a little some slides in. Let's talk about before we look at some footage, let's talk about why it's called fast hybrid autofocus. First of all, it's fast because it is fast, as you'll see. Uh, it's hybrid because it combines two different focusing technologies. There's contrast detection focusing, which has been around for a long time, and now there's a new phase detection autofocus. So it's a hybrid of those two different types of autofocus. And when I say phase, that's P-H-A-S-E, not face. It, cameras also have face detect for autofocusing, but we're talking about a different technology called phase, P-H-A-S-E, phase detect. So the camera, has the camera has 273 focus points embedded in the sensor that control the autofocus. Phase is fast. Phase gets the focus there fast, and then contrast is the accuracy. So you combine those two in a hybrid focusing mode, and you've got speed and accuracy. The two of them together, what makes it so great. I also like to say, before I get into further into the autofocus, is that there's nothing wrong with the manual focus on the camera. If you prefer to use manual focus, and I still would use manual focus for stationary subjects such as interviews, product shots, <coughs> excuse me, those sort of things, that would still be my choices to use manual focus where I'm in total control. But, so let me, so manual focus, you still have peaking, you still have focus magnification, all that works great. The focusing is very smooth on the camera. I have no complaints about that. But when you get into action with the camera and you want to follow a moving subject like this bird, sports, uh, that sort of thing, I guarantee you that the camera can keep can, can track the focus better than you can do manually. Um, so let's look at some footage here. Well, first of all, any questions yet from anybody? Okay. Let's just take a look. And so before I roll the footage, let me say one more thing. All the footage you're about to see was pretty much shot with this camera's standard default out of the box autofocus settings also. Now, the camera has literally probably 
I would say a dozen different settings that, and combinations of settings, how those interact, a dozen times 12 uh, settings that control how you can customize how the autofocus performs. So if you really want to get into it and change how the autofocus performs, you can do that also. But the stuff I'm showing today is stuff that I shot in the, in the process of producing my training video, testing footage that I shot. And all of this is pretty much just shot with the camera's out of the box default settings. But if you wanted to, if you're a power user, you can go in and you can tell the camera, only look at this part of the screen. Only look at that part of the screen. Only look at the center. There's all kinds of different ways, different areas you can tell it where it's going to look to focus on the subject. You can also tell it how quickly it jumps from subject to subject. So if something if you're focused on this gentleman here and someone else comes into frame, I can tell it, do I want it to immediately jump to the other one or do I want to hold on him longer and take it? Or, so you, you can do the speed, uh, subject tracking, sensitivity, lots of different um, settings that there's no way we could get into in a presentation like this. But if you don't want to get into all that, you just put it on auto, let it go. It's going to do a great job anyways. I hope you'll see on this video. And there's some places where you can see where it does fail. I've, I, I'm not just going to show you sanitized video where everything is perfect. Now look, it never went out of focus. There's some stuff in here where the camera goes out of focus, and you're going to see that too. But I think that those situations are rare. So without further ado, I will roll the video. And I might even step down here a little bit so I can see it better myself. So this is shooting at um, 120 frames per second in HD. It's a 4K camera, but most of this, a lot of this stuff is shot in uh, HD. Uh, and that's tracking the autofocus. I'm not touching the autofocus at all. And that bird's moving pretty fast because we're shooting at 120 frames per second. So this is five times slower than real time. So that bird, those birds are moving pretty quick and it's tracking those very, very closely. I know without having clouds in the background and stuff of this picture that you can't tell that the, uh, this is also with the lens maxed out wide open too, so it's a very shallow depth of field. Now you can see a few places where the bird, if you look at his eye, you'll see him maybe slip out of focus towards the other end. But I guarantee you that you could not track that bird manually and keep it in focus like that. I just guarantee you, because I've tried to do it myself. Um, so it's tracking autofocus here on the school bus, not being fooled by trees and stuff as they come into foreground or shadows. Um, stays right on there. Here, the focus is not being fooled by the power lines in front of the train. When I started to track the train, it knew that I was tracking the train and it stayed on the train. And notice that when I zoom out and push back in, it's par focal, so I don't have, so I can immediately change my focal length by zooming in and out, and the focus is still gonna stay right there. I don't have to worry about like if I was using an SLR lens or something, where if I zoom out, suddenly the focus is gonna change because that's the way SLR lenses are made. Even on something like this, where there really isn't any sharp edges, there's not really high contrast, it's tracking the face of that uh, sea lion there um, pretty well. I like to shoot the testing in slow motion because that's like probably the hardest way for the camera to do slow motion. And it also gives me a chance to really kind of look, did it slip out of focus or not? Again, just a black dog, not a lot of detail in his fur. And it tracked him perfectly going out into the water. It doesn't slip back there to the waves. Coming towards me, that's one of the hardest things for, for you to focus manually is when the subject is coming at you straight on like that. And I'm not sure if it slips here or not, but I think it's pretty rock solid. It did better job than I could do myself. Okay, so this uh, great blue heron here, as you'll see as he moves around, I'm on his legs as I track up his body. He stays completely in focus. It doesn't slip and go back to the water or anything. And in a minute, you'll see the bird start to peck around as he feeds on fish and stuff. And he's moving so fast, I can't really track him well enough. And he goes out of frame for a second. But notice that when his head comes back into frame, the camera is still holding focus at where he was last. It didn't slip and go to the trees or the water in the background. So it looks simple, but if you've ever shot wildlife like this before, this is, this is difficult to track focus on something like that, on a mo moving subject. 
and the camera's doing it all on itself. I'm not touching autofocus at all. I'm not even like helping it by saying, I want to be focused on the bird's head, now you take over. I'm not even doing that. I'm just leaving the camera on autofocus 100% of the time. Now here, notice how the camera's smart enough to know that, hey, the bird's the important thing here. That's what we've been tracking before he got into the weeds. Now he's going to come through the weeds and stay there. Now watch as the weeds get thicker and thicker. It's going to slip and there. Now, these, but I, I, I don't blame the camera. I would, have, I, I would say that's a good time to rack focus to the weeds and lose the bird at that point anyway because he was so obscured. Anybody have any questions right now? Okay, we'll just continue on with the, just interrupt me if you have any questions. It's a very informal. There we go, I'm back, yes. That rack focus, can you modify the speed of it so it's not, if you, so you can still leave it in and it doesn't look like it was an autofocus? Yes, you can control the speed. His question was, can you control the speed of how the autofocus reacts? Yes, you can control it so it's a more gradual change if you want that, yes. Um, have we seen the alligator yet? Okay, so I'm going to track, I'm going to go from this bird here, pull back to the alligator, and the bird stays completely in focus there. The alligator's in focus too, because now we have a, a wide depth of field here. But watch as I go on this shot here, I'm going to just pan over to the alligator, and the alligator's in focus as soon as we get there. So that's, that's pretty fast reaction time on that. And those those are probably, you know, in distance, lateral distance from the camera. They're, the alligator's probably five or six feet farther away from me than the, uh, than the bird is. Again, tracking a couple of pelicans coming at me. I was shooting these pe same pelicans this day with my F-55 and manual focus on that, of course. And I, I had tons of trouble tracking the pelicans coming directly at me like that. But the Z, uh, Z-90, my Z-90, uh, tracked and perfect. Or this one here, I'm focused on one pelican. As soon as I go over to the other pelican, he focused on him. Now, it lost it behind the, tr the bushes. But hey, I can accept that. The, my point is that the focus is never going to be foolproof. It's never going to focus on exactly what you want all the time. Um, but the majority of the time, it's going to know what it wants. Again, even something like this, just random waves shooting in slow motion. Just put it on autofocus, and it's focusing on. You see the droplets of water and everything. They're right there in focus. Again, not, not, none of this is really tremendous footage or anything. I'm just testing autofocus, shooting this stuff. Taxi coming at me again. Very difficult to shoot if you have to rack focus uh, manually. But um, you can see the headlight there stays right in focus as it goes through. And then as the headlight goes out, it'll move back. Something like this here with the airplane coming through, I believe it's going to go into the trees. The focus does not switch over to the trees. The focus stays on the airplane because the camera knows that's what you're tracking. It knows that the trees coming in and obscuring are not important. That, I think, is a pretty good example of the camera not being fooled. This here, I don't even know why I put this one in. Yeah, autofocus is working, but... Let's see what else is coming up. It's been a, few, been a couple of weeks since I've seen this footage. Any other questions so far right now? Anybody? It's this little camera right here. This is the NX80. Mine's a Z90, but essentially they're the same camera. HDMI output is uh, 10, uh, 4K, 4K, 420, 8-bit. Um, even a shot like this, I mean, you can see even though it has a one-inch sensor, so you can get some nice shallow depth of field with it. It's not a Super 35 sensor camera, but it's a one-inch sensor, so you can get, still get some nice cinematic look out of it. Uh, and again here, panning down the, uh, the uh, rusty uh, bolt there, or hook, it doesn't slip and go to the background. Tracking a movement, moving boat. Never slips, never, never misses a beat. And again, I'm not helping it at all. I'm not telling it focus on the boat. I'm just aiming at the boat, and it says, hey, let's, let's follow that. Here, the guy goes behind the, the uh, post there. It still stays on him. It doesn't slip to the wood in front of him there either. What's up? Uh, what's the Z90 is about 2,500 or so. The NX80 is a 22, and then there's the um, AX700, which is under 2,000. 
and there's all basically the same camera image wise you give a, you you give up some features as you go down the list the uh, Z90 has SDI out the other two cameras do not have SDI out the Z90 shoots in XAVCS uh, XAVCL I'm sorry uh, the other two cameras shoot in XAVC uh, uh, S so a few differences like that but as far as auto focusing goes and image quality wise and the picture you can get out of the camera though they're, they're all identical in that regard was that low light uh, it's uh, it's it's a good low light camera yes uh, I'm trying to think what I where I would rank it with other cameras but um, it's way better than like a camera than an EX1. I don't know if I, how many of you might be familiar with the old EX1 and EX3. It's way better than low light in the, than those cameras. Much cleaner, less noise. Is there something like the R3 or S3, uh, A7, R3, right? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. The A7, R3, right? The DSLR. Oh, the DSLRs? Um, I don't think it's as good as low light as those A7. The A7 cameras are phenomenal in low light. So, no, it, it can't touch those. So. I would give those the winning, I would give those the nod for low light, but I would give this the, re, the nod for everything else. Because we've got peaking, we've got zebras, we've got great autofocus, uh, XLR inputs. Um, and these, to me, what I really love about these cameras is how stealthy they are. I can take my Z90 into places to shoot stock footage and things that I would get kicked out of with some other camera. So maybe I'm not supposed to talk about that here, but the, ha the handle comes off. You just unscrew these two knobs and the camera handle comes off. You take off the lens hood and what do you got left? You've got a very small little teeny camera that doesn't attract any attention at all. In fact, I don't, I don't have the lens hood on mine here either. So you take the lens hood off, the handle off, the, uh, this hood off, and you've got a little small unobtrusive 4K camera with S-Log too if you want to use that S-Log that, you know, that, that looks pretty good. Yes, it has. It has S-Log3 on it and HLG also. So they're, they're showing some HLG footage over here and stuff. So it has Hyperlog Gamma, HDR, and S-Log3 also. Yep. Or none of this is S-Log. This is just stuff that I went in and got into the paint menus and created a look that I liked. And so most of this is just straight, straight out of the camera with maybe a little bit of touch-up in DaVinci Resolve. I like to bring things through Resolve a little bit and touch them up if I can. But most of this is just right straight out of the camera. So, 12x, 12x zoom lens. But if you're shooting in HD mode, then it has also digital extender, so you can so it'll do a crop sensor, so it'll, all within it, and it has another function called clear image zoom also. Now that's kind of an electronic way of magnifying the pixels and stuff, but it looks very clean. That's that that's no that that's just optical zoom. The flower is just optical zoom. This is just optical. All this, uh, I think, is optical zoom. How close were you to that flower? Probably about that close. Okay. Yeah. Just sitting here. Yeah. Uh, it was like right here, um, and I just took my tripod, lowered it down, got it about that high above the flower, and then just widened out. Because um, it has a, it has kind of a, an unusual macro mode in that if you're wide angle, you can, you can focus on something right up almost to the glass. But if you zoom in a little bit, then your, focus, your minimum focusing distance gets quite a bit further out. So if I want to do a real close up shot like the bee on the flower, I want to get that camera real close and actually zoom out, not zoom in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as you saw, the, white, the, the focus still works great on that. So this would be a really phenomenal uh, wedding or documentary camera. Oh, I think so, yeah. Even as an A cam? I, yeah, I think so. I mean, Why not? Good. I yeah. Was that it was just a right. <laughs> that was a surprise when I got I mean, mine too. Okay. Yep. Right. And 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 the slow mo. You know, yeah. they love. Uh, well, it will do 120 frames per second at full HD, uh, with full resolution. It'll go up to 240, 480, and 960, but that's at a reduced resolution. Now, I'll tell you, for my own purposes, anything above 120 I don't, is not good enough for my purposes. But for other people, if you're in bright light, if it's the right situation, it, 240 might be good enough. Is it? Oh, 240 still is? Okay. But, but it's, it's buffered. Yes. Okay. Yes, you're right. Thank you, Tom. So, no, what it does is... 
you put it in the high frame rate mode and you push the button, it'll capture like eight seconds of video and then it has to stop and it takes at about 30 seconds to process that eight seconds of video. But there's a couple of different ways you could do it too because you could do it, I could either push the button and it'll record for eight seconds and then buffer it or I can just use like a cache mode and I would say I need to capture when this glacier falls off, when this ice falls off the glacier or something else unpredictable predictable is gonna happen. I can set it up for what's called end trigger so that I can wait, oh, I see. The, the ice falls off the glacier, I push the button and it, and it takes that last eight seconds of whatever the camera saw, so it's great for unpredictable stuff. So is, it, is it constantly capturing in that mode? In that mode, yes. It's constantly capturing like an eight second buffer in that mode. So when I see that eight seconds of video I want, I push the button and it captures that and writes it to the card. You just, but it, you have to wait uh, you about a minute or so for it to do the capture. Yeah, okay. So uh, that's it, that's it for that video play. It's gone in my other presentation now. So um, any other questions on fast hybrid autofocus? The main takeaway is that it's easy. You just turn it on and say focus. You know, there's, there's no settings to talk about. You just turn it on and it goes, yep. I uh, do recall it holds two SD cards. Oh, two, SD. two SD cards, yes. Gig Max or 128 maybe, or? Uh, I think you higher than that. You can get 256 or something. Okay. All right. Yeah, they're going to live. They're going live. All right. Well, thank you for coming. And um, if you want to see it again, I'll do this presentation tomorrow. Thank you for coming.